Hello there, welcome to ITV News Meridian. Tonight's headlines in the South East. Put the brakes on. The mother of a severely disabled woman says she feels abandoned after her Sussex care provider withdrew their support. As a family, we can't do this for much longer. You know, it's, it's exhausting. Serving up more than tea and cake, the West Kent Cafe providing a safe space for survivors of domestic abuse. How small drips can lead to deep trouble. Why keeping on top of the little jobs can save you a fortune. And a Second World War firefighter pioneer. We meet Gladys from Worthing as she celebrates her 100th birthday. Good evening. The mother of a severely disabled woman says she feels abandoned by a leading care provider in Sussex. 27-year-old Ebony Wilson from Brighton, who needs round-the-clock support, was given six weeks' notice that Chaley Heritage Pathway was withdrawing her care plan, leaving her parents to cope alone. Well, the school and care provider says it's struggling to recruit staff in the face of a massive national shortage of carers. Sarah Saunders reports. I'm going to get you in your chair, darling. Oh, let's put the brakes on. Donna Wilson describes her daughter Ebony as a happy person. But she has cerebral palsy, autism and incontinence. She can't walk, is non-verbal and fed by tube, so Ebony needs care around the clock. All of which is being provided by her mum and dad. Since Chaley Heritage Pathways gave six weeks' notice, they were withdrawing the family's care plan. It's a really hard work, and um, as a parent, you do it because you love your child, you know, and just because she's 27 years old, that doesn't change what she means to us. But we're not getting younger, we're getting older. We can't do the things that we used to do 30 years ago. And, you know, to have a care package in place one minute and then six weeks later, I have nothing at all. Sorry. Absolutely. Ebony was being looked after at home by a rota of four carers. But the family say rosters were often changed. There were staff shortages, leaving their daughter unexpectedly let down and communication could be poor before the provision was taken away altogether. She loves being here with us. We love having her here with us. but. As a family, we can't do this for much longer. You know, it's, it's exhausting. And it's not fair on her either, because we can't give her what she needs. The family have huge praise for individual staff members at Chaley, who they say were professional and kind, but feel the organisation let them down. Chaley has admitted, like many care providers, it is currently having serious problems with recruitment. We, we very rarely have to hand back a contract and particularly because we've had such a long relationship with uh, Ebony and her family, you know, even since she was uh, perhaps about one year old, I think. I think it reflects the sort of much wider issues we've had over recruitment. It was something which we felt in the end, if we weren't going to be able to recruit, it was better to say so. Ebony's family and the local authority are trying to find new carers. So far, no one has applied and they are continuing to cope on their own. Sarah Saunders, ITV News. In other news, more than 900 people were intercepted in small boats crossing the English Channel yesterday. 23 vessels were stopped by UK and French authorities. More than 2,500 people have attempted the dangerous journey so far this year. Two serving Metropolitan Police officers and one former officer have appeared in court charged with sharing offensive messages with the killer of Sarah Everard. The three denied allegations they shared the racist and mis misogynistic material with Wayne Cousins from Deal. He was given a whole life sentence for killing 33-year-old Miss Everard. Her body was discovered in woods near Ashford in March last year. A trial will take place in July. A man who used what's thought to be a paring knife to attack a woman in Brighton has been jailed. David Kevill was arrested when a concerned neighbour on Barden Road called the police. The woman's injuries were not life-threatening. A man who stole three bronze statues from a home near Tenterden has been jailed for two years. The sculptures known as the Dancing Ladies were badly damaged in last year's raid. Jack Strover, who's 34 and from Ashford, admitted two counts of 
Administrators have revealed why 11 butchers in Kent have been forced to close. They say 155 employees have been made redundant due to the move by J.C. Rook & Sons. It suffered losses in the wake of the pandemic and the subsequent lockdown measures. Refugees fleeing from the war in Ukraine face hazardous journeys over hundreds of miles to the borders of Poland, Hungary and Romania. And black and Asian refugees say when they get to what should be safety, they then face racism, with many having been prevented from crossing borders and boarding trains. That was the case for a medical student hoping to study in Kent. It looked like that man was literally taking our chance of survival just because of the colour of our skin. We were discriminated because of our color, and we were also discriminated. They said we look like Russian spies. Well, stories like those prompted a Nigerian journalist living in Tunbridge Wells to take action. Janine Anthony has set up a global network of volunteers helping black and Asian refugees to escape Ukraine and reach places of safety. Janine Anthony, thank you for talking to us today. Now, you've raised £50,000 to establish this network. Can you tell us how you've been able to help? It literally started from Twitter spaces, the power of social media, where we just wanted to get, you know, uh, black uh, foreign nationals and students who were stuck in the war and couldn't get on public transport, um, you know, points as well as border points. And from Twitter spaces, we're able to do um, fundraising through different portals, whether it's cryptocurrency and whether it's through, you know, cash uh, applications. And that's how we've been able to raise this money, not just for their feeding, their transportation, but also seeing how we can reallocate them academically, because most of these are doctors, engineers and many other students are based in Ukraine. And at the moment, you are concentrating your efforts on getting some medics out of Ukraine. And sadly, two of them have died. Can you tell us what happened? Most of these students are not used to such freezing conditions, suffering from frostbite. And for some of them, their, their bodies can't take that. And they sadly passed away uh, from hypothermia. And, you know, some of these students who are medical doctors as well, um, or training to become medics as well, are looking to get back into different universities across the EU. So we're trying to help them with that. But sadly, um, some of these students have had to suffer such fates. And there has been racism. I've seen things on social media where black and Asian students have been pushed back um, if they're trying to board a train, for example. Does that mean there are lots of people still trapped there? Yes, one of our major uh, rallying call now for a humanitarian corridor is in Kherson, where there are still dozens of students sleeping in really cold uh, bunkers. But they see a lot of their friends who had to flee, who had to go through um, such um, racist treatment. Some were not even allowed to, board, you know, board public transport, and that's where that that power to, and that call for that to, to be relaxed allowed them pass through. So uh, there are a lot of calls for these corridors to open, and hopefully um, they can get out. But again, this war was not of their choosing, and they are actually right now really traumatized. And how many people would you say you've helped so far and have some of them, well, uh, many of them hoping to get to the southeast? Yes, uh, we've helped at least 300 students, um, speaking of the Black Foreigners in UK and Volunteers Group. And yes, some of them are looking to, to come to the Southeast to study. Hopefully, their short-term courses, universities will be open to them uh, for fellowship and other opportunities for them to come study here and still have a, you know, a chance at a better life, especially if they can add to the NHS um, that has a number of foreign nationals as doctors um, here in the UK. Janine Anthony, thank you for talking to us and telling us what you've been doing. Pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. People experiencing domestic abuse can often feel detached from other people and most of the work being done to support them focuses on risk and safety planning. Today, a new initiative was launched in West Kent to support the mental health and well-being of survivors. A cafe where women and children can meet in a safe place and talk about their experiences. Tony Green found out more. A new cafe opened today in Tunbridge Wells, but we can't tell you where it is. The people who come to the Serenity Cafe have one thing in common. They're all survivors of domestic abuse. A safe place to meet and talk is a world away from the feelings of isolation once so familiar to people like domestic abuse survivor Sadie. I did feel very alone. I didn't feel like I could reach out. I didn't feel that people would understand what was happening to me. So it was a very isolating time. I, I, it was the most loneliest time of my life. There's no shortage of cafes in Tunbridge Wells, but 
Presumably, there are conversations you can have here that you can't have anywhere else. This cafe is, is very specialist and it will be for people in, in the experience and being that it's isolating here, they can get the support, the peer support as well, which is, is really important in terms of addressing that isolation because you are not on your own. What difference does it make to you? To know that there's a space, a safe space that someone can go, someone can reach out, someone can feel like they're part of the world. Often with the isolation you can feel that you're living in a world by yourself. By being in a room with women alike who are experiencing the same, it's, it makes you feel that you exist, you are a person, you do matter. It's very isolating to have experienced domestic abuse. You, you can lose your friends, your family, and a lot of the time people just don't understand what you've experienced. So what we're aiming to do here is provide um, that service, not only with the cafe, but also within our other services that we offer at Look Ahead. £5,000 in crowdfunding helped pay for the cafe. Estate agent Natalie Boardman was happy to donate. We get a lot of people obviously coming into the office looking for a new home sometimes they've come from difficult circumstances and sometimes that has been domestic violence and I do remember one particular lady she came into the office she'd left an abusive husband she'd sort of left just with a suitcase and she just really didn't know where to turn and the fact of having somewhere that I could signpost people to and actually say here's somewhere it's a safe place you can talk to people who had similar experiences and get some support and advice I just thought that was something amazing to be able to do Anyone who wants to find out more can contact the charity Look Ahead and find a safe space to begin to rebuild their life. Tony Green, ITV News, Tunbridge Wells. The Gatwick Express service will resume at the beginning of next month. It was first suspended two years ago as the pandemic took hold and passenger numbers tumbled at the airport. The trains return a week after the South Terminal reopens. More than a million pounds will be spent repairing Brighton Museum's roof. The Department for Culture grant will pay for urgent work to the Grade 2 listed Georgian building. It's currently showing an exhibition by the photographer Mary Stafford. University Hospitals Sussex has been awarded nearly £900,000 of NHS money. The Trust successfully bid for the funding, which will help patients get access to digital maternity services across the whole foundation. And jewellery belonging to Force's sweetheart Dame Vera Lynn was sold at auction today. A heart-shaped diamond pendant raised £26,000 alone. Her entire collection made more than £53,000. All the proceeds are going to the Ditchling Singers Charitable Trust. Now you're watching ITV News in the South East. Coming up on our programme this evening, paving the way for modern day firefighters. Gladys from Worthing meets some of today's recruits on her 100th birthday. And the Saharan dust cloud turning skies yellow and leaving cars in need of a good clean. Philippa will be here to tell us more. And you can find out more on all of today's top stories across the region uh, on our website, itv.com slash meridian is the address. Uh, you can call us if you have a story idea and you can follow us online as well. Slight concerns that men in rural areas could be missing the support they need with their mental health because they don't know where to turn. New research shows they are less likely to seek help than those living in urban areas. Well, charities here say it's important that men know there are people and organisations that can help. James Webster has been speaking to one man whose brother took his own life and now works to help other men who are struggling to cope. One day we'd gone shopping, it was a bank holiday Monday, came back later in the day, my mum started screaming upstairs and my dad went up and I could just hear them shouting Daniel. So then I ran upstairs, went into my mum and dad's room into the ensuite and um, seen that, that Dan had, had taken his own life. It was 2005, Matthew was only 10. He and his family still don't know why Daniel chose to end his life. I should have had my first pint with my brother. I should have been able to take him out driving when I passed my test. And there's all these things that I should have had that I feel have, have been taken away from me. And it's not Dan's fault. I, I understand that it's not Dan's fault because he was in a place that, that was clearly too difficult for him to manage. But what I realised very early on is that it could have been prevented. 
18 years have now passed and Matthew feels sure that if his brother had had the right person to talk to, he would still be here. New research has found that 43% of men in rural areas would seek support if they're struggling with mental health. But that's less than the 51% in urban areas. And when asked why the three main barriers, a stigma around mental health, not knowing who to turn to and not knowing what support there is. Jules from Yolding in Kent set up the charity His after one of her friends took his own life in 2014. Society, how they are brought up, has taught them to man up, boys don't cry, pull yourself together. So their emotions are suppressed and unless they have a really good friend that they can open up and talk to, they tend to not to because they don't want to burden their families or be seen as weak to their friends. So they tend to just suppress their emotions. After the death of his brother, Matthew also set up a charity which aims to prevent suicide and support families who are affected. Each year they get football clubs around the country to wear their kit inside out as part of Inside Out Day. Football played a huge part for me me and Dan, but I understand the ability that ha- that football has to start conversations um, and it has a platform that can change so many lives and being able to utilise our message and work in partnership with these huge football clubs is, is a massive thing for us. And while the need for men to talk is important, in Matthew's experience he says that's not always enough. I think we're getting better at it, but I think still we just stand from the outside and say you need to talk more. Actually it needs to be a, a collective effort. We need to listen more, we need to get better at actually listening to what people are going through and creating environments where people feel they can talk. Matthew hopes that sharing his story and that of his brother Daniel will help other men realise that help and support is available. James Webster, ITV News. Now the ITV Evening News is on after us with details about what's coming up on their programme this evening. Here's Mary Nightingale. Free at last and on her way home, Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe flies back to the UK after being detained in Iran for six years. President Zelensky invokes 9 11 in a direct plea to US Congress for a no fly zone over Ukraine's airspace. An uncertain future for the babies born through surrogacy into a war zone. And. 25 years since making it big, how Michael Flatley is fundraising for Ukraine. Do join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Very, thank you. Now, wonky cupboard doors, leaky taps, cracks in the walls, home repairs are inconvenient and costly to get sorted. But experts are warning that ignoring small repairs can turn into bigger, possibly unaffordable problems, costing thousands of pounds more in the long run. Catherine Walker has this report looking at the value of home maintenance. It's been a busy time for roofers like Levi in Ashford in Kent. First, Storm Dudley, quickly followed by Storm Eunice, caused damage and disruption across the region. And while many customers have already been in touch to fix the storm damage, he's worried that even more are delaying repairs. If homeowners get in contact with a professional uh, sooner rather than later, uh, when they know that they've got a, got a problem, any water ingress, anything like that, you know, it'll always work out cheaper. You know, call a professional man, get them to have a look at it, okay, and then, and then go from there, all right? It could be just a simple case of some, some, a slip tile or repointing, anything like that, you know, and it's going to save them a lot of money in the long run. Most of us have house maintenance jobs we're putting off until tomorrow. Wonky cupboards, leaky showers or even cracks in the wall. But research shows that allowing these house niggles to build up could cost more in the long run. The latest survey found that neglecting house maintenance left UK homeowners £17 billion out of pocket. The average cost per home came to £1,800, with 5% having to fork out £5,000 or more. So yeah, it came all the way through, round the, round the corner, and then as you can see, it's come into here on this corner and damaged all of this and come right round the room. 
It's a story that's all too familiar for a partner. Busy with her new business, she simply didn't find time to clean her gutters. But months of neglect meant that overflowing pipes ended up leaking inside the house, leaving the family with a bill for £1,000. Something so small that could have been rectified so quickly um, is very, very frustrating, uh, particularly because it's come into our house. Um, so my, my advice would be, honestly, if you've got anything small that's going to cost you £70, £80 or even £150, just get it done. It's a tip echoed by the experts. They're encouraging homeowners to try and make time for house maintenance. Particularly the time, the time we're in now, where budgets are being squeezed financially from every which way, it's important that we don't forget about the house maintenance. So even things like washing machines and things, just making sure you clean the filters. If you have a tumble dryer, do that, a vacuum cleaner. All of these little things that everybody can do, you know, and, and they could do it, you know, once a month on a Saturday or something with the family. Finding that extra money to fix the damp patch on the ceiling can feel out of reach. The pressure on household finances means many of us are worried about heating our homes or feeding our children. But if you can, spending a little now can save a lot in the future. Catherine Walker, ITV News. Uh, now, she began serving with the fire brigade when she was just 19 years old and became a leading firewoman in the Second World War. Gladys Jones, who lives in Worthing, is now celebrating her 100th birthday and has been meeting some local firefighters of today. Charlotte Wilkins has been to meet her. Gladys Jones was just 19 when she joined the fire service. Britain was at war and while she wanted to be a wren, her mother wouldn't let her. For one thing, it meant I didn't have to go away from home um, and I, I could join the, the local uh, fire brigade. Um, and the other thing was, I liked the uniform. <laughs> but I hear it was a little bit uncomfortable. Yes, itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Gladys, tell us a little bit, because you weren't actually putting fires out as such, were you? But tell us about the role that you played within the fire service when you were at Preston Circus. Women were doing a man's job, which was unusual in those days. Her main role was in communications, sending crews out to various incidents, based here at Preston Circus Fire Station in Brighton. Yes, it, it was quite exciting. Yes. I mean, there were the, the bad moments, but um, you forget about those. Gladys was an integral part of Blue Watch from 1941 to 1944, and she was even on call on her wedding day. I, I wasn't called out. <laughs> I bet it was a bit nerve-wracking, though, reading your vows and thinking you yeah. might get a, a, get a call cool. out. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy now Gladys has celebrated her 100th birthday with a visit from crews from her local station in Worthing, a remarkable woman inspiring the next generation of firefighters. Charlotte Wilkins, ITV News, Worthing. Fantastic. What an achievement. It is. It really, really is. And, yes. you know, seeing the future generations, well, yeah. that must have been fun. Well done, Gladys. Happy birthday. Right, Pip joins us now <laughs> to talk about Saharan dust, which was kind of promised by Holly yesterday yeah, and yeah. did arrive. Uh, yeah, I've bought it today. It's nice when things work out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it arrived overnight and we've been seeing the effects today. Let's take a look at this first graphic. This actually shows how the plume has been moving through the course of today. So you can see the areas where it's most concentrated, marked in red there across the mainland continent. Um, but you can see the plume just clips the southeast of the UK there and it's been bringing a mix of fairly eerie looking skies and some thoroughly mucky cars. Let's take a look at our first picture then. Uh, this is from Bobby Louise Williams. This was taken as the day dawned over Dover and the dust giving that distinct sort of yellowy hue to the sky and there was a similar yellow glow to the sky for Jacqueline Summers as she peered out onto a dusty east mauling. Uh, we get a close up on the detail then. This was the table in Ray Whitfield's garden. You can see each drop of rain there carrying that distinct red dust and of course you may well be cursing if you washed your car 
recently. Take a look at this lot. Uh, Pamela Jackson oh. found her white car looking a little on the grubby side in Sussex. The rain bringing the dust down to the surface there. Also in Sussex, Kazia's car looked equally oh, in need of dear. a trip to the car wash. This earlier rain dried to leave this thick, dusty film. And I think Tony Cook has probably got his work cut out as well. This was the scene that greeted him on his driveway this morning. So everyone wants to know, should <laughs> they wash their car over the next few days or do we still have to worry for this stuff? No, I think as today's rain clears away, so too will that plume of dust. And the next few days, excellent weather for cleaning your car if you like that sort of thing. Dry, sunny, pretty warm by day, probably peaking on Saturday, but still it's spring, some chilly nights as well. Okay, so Matt, <laughs> did you clean your car? Because I noticed in the car park yours looked okay today. No, it's not Christmas. I won't be doing mine for a few months. No, yet. but it didn't have all of that <laughs> no, dust no, no. on it. Pretty Very dirty. Good. Yeah. Uh, weather time now with all your details. Here's Pip. Feels like home, whatever the weather. Valent Boilers and Heat Pumps, sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Rain out there today then, but for the next few days, things look pretty promising. Lots of dry and fine weather in the forecast, warm in that sunshine by day, but still some chilly nights to contend with. So what's going on? Well, we've had low pressure in charge today, bringing the rain, but through the next few days, high pressure will build in from the south. That will settle things down nicely, and we're looking at lots of sunshine taking us through the next few days. But out there at the moment, still some rain on the scene. Thankfully, that will soon clear. The cloud will then thin and break behind it. And as we head through the rest of the night, the skies become largely clear. Underneath those clearing skies, it will become quite chilly. Temperatures dipping close enough to freezing to give rise to a little patchy frost on the ground by dawn. Tomorrow morning then, a chilly start but a bright start. Glorious spring sunshine from the word go. And that remains the case as we head through the day and into the afternoon. Temperatures responding accordingly up on today's values. I think many places comfortably up at around 13 or 14 Celsius, perhaps a touch higher in one or two lucky spots. And of course, it's all thanks to that high pressure building in from the south as we head our way through tomorrow. It stays with us as we work our way into the weekend, keeping things dry and settled. And we can see that on the outlook chart lots of sunshine taking us into the weekend temperatures by day not doing too badly at all up into the teens for the most part but still the nights on the chilly side and also worth noting whilst we will have high pressure and lots of sunshine we will also take on something of an easterly breeze and that will make it feel just a touch fresher than those fairly promising temperatures suggest whatever you're doing over the next few days enjoy and i'll see you later bye bye valent sponsors itv meridian weather Something to look forward to in just a moment. The ITV Evening News Hour continues here with Mary Nightingale and I'll have your late update just after half past ten. I'm slightly worried about which car you were looking at because my car I think is filthy. I'm going to go and have a look at it. because No, I'm because sure. you know what? We think the rain cleaned it so you're all right. Okay, good. That's it. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>